Hey everyone, this is Mr. Westar again. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to use the Boolean comparison operators to write um, expressions that will evaluate to a Boolean uh, true or false. It's a pretty short lesson, um, but we really need to understand how to use each of these operators. So we're just going to review really quickly our understanding of Boolean uh, tests and conditional execution, and then we'll get into the specifics of the different operators and talk about some important tips that you need to know so that you can use them effectively. So just to review, this whole unit is about conditional execution, which means writing code in your program that allows it to make choices and decide which code it's going to run based on the value of different tests that it can perform throughout the course of your program. So what we're really talking about here is how to use if statements. And in order to do that, remember that we have to put a test in the parentheses, which is a Boolean test. What's a Boolean test? Remember that it's any expression that evaluates to either true or false. And we didn't talk about this in the last lesson, but there's actually several different ways that you can produce an expression that is going to be a Boolean expression. The most obvious way probably is to use one of those Boolean operators to test for equality or to test to see if one quantity is greater than the other one. Um, that, that will always evaluate to true or false. But there are other ways too. You can call a method that has the return type boolean and its return value can act as the boolean expression. Or you can actually have a variable of type boolean and you can put that in the parentheses and whatever the value of the variable is at the time that the if statement runs will be taken as the value of that boolean expression. But for this lesson, we're going to focus on using those Boolean operators. And here they are. Um, they're not very complicated, and they're probably what you would expect. Um, there's only really six different ways you can compare two quantities um, to assess their uh, values relative to each other. Just note the sort of order and syntax of the symbols, especially for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Also pay special note to the fact that e um, the equality operator is two equal signs. Um, and if you want to say not equal, you have to use the exclamation point. A couple more quick tips, especially for using those last two, for using equals and not equals. Make sure, <laughs> this is the most important thing really, to get out of this lesson that when you're comparing two things that you use the equality operator and not the assignment operator. I like to joke with my students that I really don't care when they come back for their 25th reunion if they forget everything except for equals does not equal equal equal. Um, and that's why in this class I always say gets and not equals when we talk about the assignment operator because I don't want you to make that mistake. Most of the time when you're writing programs if you make this mistake you'll get a syntax error. But if you're especially unlucky and you're, um, if you put a Boolean variable on the left-hand side of that expression, then your program will actually run and you'll have a logical error and your program won't work. And it's very hard to find. So make sure when you say equals that you condition yourself to mean equal equal and not the assignment operator. And the other thing is to know that you can only use the, uh, the equality operator between two primitives. If you want to compare objects, you have to use a method that we're going to talk about in the next lesson called equals. Similarly, for the other inequality tests, if you want to compare two objects, you can't use any of those inequality operators because Java doesn't know how to, you know, tell if student A is less than student B. That doesn't make any sense. Um, if you want to compare two objects, you're going to have to use a method called compare to. And we're going to talk about that in the next lesson, too. And the other tip I would just generally say, because some people screw this up, is um, just write them the way that you would read them. Um, don't get sort of confused or psyched out by what you might be used to in math. If you're going to write less than or equal to, just write less than equal. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of how to use those different comparison operators. So this is a program which uh, builds off of the same program we had last time, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So we've... Um, created a random number here between 1 to 10. We're going to ask the user to type in their answer and then we want to check to see if they guessed the correct answer. So if we're going to do a test for equality, then we're going to need to say if the user's number is equal to the correct answer, then we'll print out a success message. And if they're not, 
correct. So the opposite of that would be that we'll print out the other message. Going back to what we talked about in the last lesson, remember we want to make sure that our um, test is exhaustive if we're going to use else. And in this case it is, because if you're not right, you're wrong. Um, so here's our program. Let's run it, see what happens. Enter a number. Ah, shoot, I got it wrong. That's a pretty hard game. So suppose we wanted to make the game um, a little more user-friendly. Instead of just telling the user right or wrong, let's tell them whether their guess was too high um, or too low or just right. Well, in that case, how many alternatives do we have? We actually have three. So we can't just use if and else anymore. Now, in a later lesson, we'll talk about how to use else if. Um, but in this case, what we'll just do is we'll just have three separate if statements. So the first one's still fine. If it's they match, it's still correct. But instead, what we'll do is we'll take out this else and we'll put in some more. So if we're going to say if the number is less than the answer, then we'll print oops, that their guess was too low. Now you might be tempted to use an else here. Personally, although that is logically correct, I would say that is poor programming because it implies that that if and else are the only two parts that are connected to each other. In this case, we actually have three parts that are all connected to each other. Um, and so I'm going to write it out as three separate if statements just because I think that's the most obvious way for someone who looks at your code to figure out what's going on. Again, in a later lesson, we'll learn how to do this with else if, um, but for now, we're just going to have three if statements. All right, let's run it now. So, okay. Let's run it again one more time. Hey, hey, I got it right. How about that? Okay. So just to recap, in this lesson, we talked about a review of what uh, conditional execution is. We looked at the six different Boolean comparison operators, and we also talked about the importance of making sure that we only use them with primitives, that for objects, we're going to need to use a uh, different set of methods that we're going to talk about in the next lesson. And we also talked especially about making sure that you use the equality operator, the equal equal, instead of the assignment operator. So just remember, equal does not equal equal equal. Okay, you're all set.